Hey everybody, it's me again, Scott, and uh, I'm just coming to make this video. Uh, and it, it's pretty much a response to one of the last uh, remark I had on the uh, the whole pocket carry uh, is a bad idea video. And someone sent me a link for a video for this uh, Urban Carry 2. Uh, holster and, and I went and I actually googled it and I looked at a couple of reviews in it but but you know be honest with you I've been seeing the videos uh, for the commercials for the uh, for the product for some time and as soon as I saw it I you know I just laughed at it I said it was just ridiculous and let me explain to you why I believe it's, it's ridiculous you know it's, it's called what it's called the urban carry you know and you know I am a, a former urban person. I lived in the inner city for I did the math yesterday, 29 years. And I'm gonna tell you why that that uh, holster is it, just not good for my viewers. All right. One, it it takes too much to actually get the gun out out of your waist, man. You know you gotta pull your shirt up. You gotta reach down. And, you know what? You know, and then you talking about urban carry. You know, you're in, in crowds when you're in the city. You're in the city. I know a lot of you probably have a mental model of what it'd be like walking in the city or going where you're going. But normally, when you're in the city, say you're going downtown to buy your wife some jewelry for Valentine's Day, which is coming up, or something nice, and you're in, a, in an urban environment, uh, there are many people around, and you're carrying things. You know, you might have stopped here and there to pick up some things, and you have things in your hand. So you really don't have time to actually grab stuff, you know, use both hands to grab your gun out of your out of your waist like that. And pull the thing up and pull the, the handgun out. It, it's, a, it's a lot of body movement and a lot of action to actually, you know, get to your gun. And, and that's, to me, it, it, that makes it silly. The second thing is when, uh, and, it, and if you do decide to just drop what you ever have, which would be the natural thing, the best thing, you're going to lose whatever you drop because people are just going to pick it up and they're going to walk with it. You know, then two, um, if you're in the urban environment, you know, it was a story that I had about me and one, me and one of my boys, Monty, he, he passed away last year around, matter of fact, this time of the year, around the 18th of January last year, 2016. Is that I was buying jewelry and uh, there were there were crews, stick up crews out there in Center City, Center City, Philadelphia, on Jewelers Row, you know, and they were watching me purchase this jewelry and I didn't even see it because I was busy, you know, talking with the the salesperson and handling the merchandise that I was about to buy, you know. So unless you know, I had that extra set of eyes with me, and that's why I actually went with my buddy Monty, you know, because he's a big dude too. He was a six like six three two two ninety. You know, we were both big dudes. That's why I would, took somebody with me to have extra eyes. Because I was about to spend almost a thousand dollars on some jewelry. So, you know, in the 90s, you know. So, you know, to have a holster like that, it's just not advantageous. You know, for my holsters, I re my, my viewers, you know, most of my viewers are, my guy, my viewers are great. Guys that sub my channel, you guys are great. I love you guys. You know, 99.99% of all the comments on my feeds, on my videos, are 100% positive. 100% positive. You know, there's a couple guys, you know, that came by, you know, called me the N-word and all that stuff. Or, you know, they, they upset about the word clip or versus magazine. But those guys are anal retentive and usually don't have anything else to do, better to do than to try to correct people. You know, and they don't even really have any practical experience with guns. You know, we're in a real life situation. And I do. So I realize that can cause a lot of friction with a lot of people in the gun community because a lot of people in the gun community just talk about guns. They talk about scenarios. They really don't have no real life experience. That's why they come up with little stupid ideas. And, you know, I'm not calling that holster stupid. You know, I can see the applications in some instances, but it's definitely not something you want to carry in the city in the urban environment because it would take too much time for you to actually get to and actuate and actually clear the gun from the holster and it's that simple it's just too much you know and then you know in a scenario like I described you're in Center City or whatnot or wherever New York uh, Atlanta wherever you are in the country and you know you're buying something you have stuff in your hands and things of that nature and somebody actually a stick up crew is actually working the crowd and they actually corner you in, in the corner 
without you in closing or you without you actually knowing, which could have happened to me that day when I went to buy some jewelry in Philly, um, then they're searching you. They're not just grabbing your bags. You know, they're going through your pockets. You, you're you're holding bags, and what are you going to do? You're going to, oh, golly, you're going to reach to your waist and pull that thing. I'm like, what is that? And they was like, oh, thank you, a gun. And they're going to walk away with your gun. And maybe even your holster. Take it as a package deal, you know, like, thank you, you know. And um, so, you know, of course, we all know situation awareness is always the, th the number one thing you need to have when you carry a gun. A gun is a major responsibility. A gun is something that's going to, you know, save your life. And, you know, you always want to buy the best thing. My father, who was a correction officer, my grandfather was a sheriff's officer in Philadelphia. You know, they always told me to buy the best gun and the best, best uh, equipment for it, you know. Um, there are other means of carrying a, a, a gun that are well known. Like, uh, I actually have this Cozy Comfort by uh, DeSantis, where, you know, I usually carry this at maybe 5 o'clock on my body. You know, I, I don't have a carried it that much because I have had props some problems with this gun this holster you know I actually can't flip out of my um, my waistband you know and I, I don't like that. that's why I, I don't carry it as often as I used to um, then for like my Smith Wesson um, 38 snub nose you know of course this is my father's favorite uh, method of carrying a uh, holster this is actually my uncle Ron's uh, uh, ankle holster. He always carried an ankle. They both carried ankle holsters. It was like their favorite favorite mode of carry. And but my favorite uh, a holster is actually this uh, cobra skin, uh, uh, just plain old leather sheath uh, <laughs> of a leather uh, holster that I bought out of a bin a bin at a gun store in the nineteen around nineteen ninety one. And for five dollars, you know, and it served me wonderfully. You know, you see, I wear it out. I take a suede brush and I just basically, you know, clean it off because it gets dirty after I wear it all day because of sweat and everything like that. It's very comfortable, you know. But when you have something that's encumbersome, where you're you're trying to draw, even if you practice it constantly, because I know a lot of you guys, you probably practice your draw, which you should, you know. Even if if it's uh, something you, you you practice your draw all the time with you know one thing you have to take in consideration is that you know if you never been confronted with that type of situation you know your body is going to do some things that you're not expecting to do you're going to get nervous you're going you might freeze you might throw up you might you know sorry crap your pants you know you might do any number of things you know um so you really want to be able to get to your gun as simply and as fast as you possibly can when you're you're carrying the gun, especially in inner city, there's so many plots and and plans that are actually out there, you know, that I can't keep up with them all. You know, especially now with cell phones or smartphones, you know, that there's so many tactics and things that people imaginations sitting home all day because that's what they do is they're thieves and they're, they're sitting up there and they're trying to imagine new ways to rob people. You know, and you know, me and you, we're not privy to it, you know, until it actually comes to play. You know, they put it in action, they put it in play. So, what I suggest is uh, just stick with these regular holsters for my viewers, you know. I'm not trying, I don't know the people that made the holster. I had no beef with them. I don't, it's not impersonal. But when I saw the holster, I was like, wow, no way. And I just hope none of you guys will invest the money in, in a system like that because it's just too encumbersome. It takes two hands, you know, to uh, to draw it out. And, and like like if you were in the store and you had one of these other type of systems, you know, um, what I always say is that, you know, you always have to be used to drawing your gun with one hand. If you were in the store and you just bought that jewelry, you know, like I did, it would be best. You know, I didn't have two eyes, but it would be best. You know, I'd only had, I had uh, four eyes at the time. Um... If I was not with my friend, I know what I did. I would have tucked my shirt behind the gun so I could have grabbed the gun quickly. You know, say even though you know some states you can't brandish whatever the law is, you know, but you gotta protect your life, especially when you have some merchandise on you that people are willing to kill you for. You know, nowadays, you know, I was talking to some friends of mine, some female friends of mine, that are recent, you know, have basically uh, went out and purchased guns, and you know, they they're going out and buy guns, you know. And uh, I was telling them, you know, the sad thing about today is that even if you have something that's of value 
and somebody tries to rob you with it, you don't know if they're going to shoot you or not. You know, they're going to kill you, or you, are they just going to take the item and flee? You know, take the my personal philosophy: uh, a laptop, a ring, some jewelry is not worth your life or their life. You know, they take it and leave. Yeah, I'll be mad, but that's what I got homeowners insurance for, and that's what I actually have uh, jewelry, jewelry insurance. You know, I have insurance, car insurance, all that stuff. It's not worth human life. I can work and get whatever I, I work for again, you know, but you cannot replace a human life, even though that human life may be a little of the scumbag nature. You know, there's always a second chance, especially for you, Christians. You know, there's always a second chance in Jesus Christ. You know, uh, you know, I wouldn't want to rob anyone of that opportunity, but unfortunately nowadays you don't know who's who. You know, that's why I carry a gun and I'm not afraid to use it, you know. So, again, you know, and another thing I like to talk about is shooting with two hands. I know that's the standard practice nowadays. They teach people this one particular pose. I forgot the name of it. But, you know, you're basically placing your, your target flat-chested. It's not a good thing because they, the reason why they adopted that, that, that way of shooting because, it's one, it's easy to implement. It's very accurate to shoot from that pose but you know at the same time you're exposing all your body organs and the reason why the military uses that is because they have body armor they have class 3 class 4 body armor on so they don't really care if they take a, a, a AK round to the chest because they, they're protected you know their uh, their vest can actually absorb that round you know with little minimal damage to their body so you know please go out there and start practicing shooting with one hand Right hand, off hand, and um, strong hand. And um, not only that, go out there and um, practice shooting five rounds as fast as possible, one handed. One handed. You know, as accurately as you possibly can. That's what my father taught me to do, because that's what he was taught, you know, in the, uh, you know, when he was a, uh, what do you call a, uh, well, he was in the Marine Corps. He was a military police in the Marine Corps. And he was also a correction officer. They always teach you to shoot, be able to give five rounds downrange as fast and as accurately as possible. So, again, you know, I just like, you know, I thank you guys for being so positive. God bless you all. This is 2017. I pray that, you, you, you know, your year is well and goes really well. Sounds like it's going to be a really good year for gun owners, you know, with concealed carry with reciprocity throughout the country and, you know, uh, the removal of, uh, was it, uh, silencers off of the NFA list. You know, it sounds real great and everything. And I pray, again, you know, that you guys be safe. And, again, you know, stay away from holsters that it's just so complicated just to get to your gun. All right? God bless you. Love you all. Peace.